Hi, this is Lori Mangold, and this is a skill builder on how to make flying geese. This video, we are going to focus on the Eleanor Burns method. Eleanor Burns is a longtime quilter, fun to take classes from, um, and she was the originator of the Quilt in a Day books, which many of us older folks have learned to quilt with. Um, this is her flying goose ruler. She has two sizes. This is the small. It does a one and a half by three and a three by six. And today we're going to show you the three by six. She has a large ruler that does the two by four and the four by eight also. Um, so this is what we're going to use. Inside of that package, she has great instructions. It will give you all the information you need um, for what size to cut your blocks and how each step works. It's very clearly written so that you can, um, you can follow along with that also. So I'm going to have Michelle zoom in and we're going to get started with this. Okay, I'm going to set my, my demo stack over here and we're going to start with two squares. Are we lined up okay? I think so. All right, so we have two squares here and the instructions will tell you what size to cut them. Two squares will make four flying geese blocks. And let me show you as an example, this is what a flying goose block is. And if you look at it, this tan is the goose and the blue are the, is the sky. And that's important because when you go to cut, or cut your squares, they're going to tell you which one is the goose and which one is the sky. And I will tell you in her method, the large one is the sky and the small one is the goose, just so you, you know that, okay? And so this method gives you four of these, okay? So the first thing you're gonna do after you cut your squares is can you see that I've drawn a line on this diagonal? And this is on the wrong side. On this side, I drew the X, diagonal, diagonal, on the right side because what we have to do is we line these right sides together. And I'm kind of anal in a way, um, instead of just eyeballing it, I poke right through the intersection here in the middle, and I poke down below in the middle, and then I kind of lay it down, and I play with it until my four corners are touching the lines on the square below. These are cut lines, they're never going to show up. So it, it's not critical that you, uh, you can use a Frixon. You, I used the sew line marker. You can even use a pencil if you want because you're gonna cut on those lines. Now I've pinned on both sides just to keep it in, in place. I'm then gonna take this to my sewing machine and just like a half square triangle, can you see the lines there, Michelle? Okay, I'm going to sew a quarter inch away on both sides of just one diagonal, okay? I did it in block thread so you could see it. So this is my drawn line, and this is a sew line, and this is a sew line. I'm doing nothing in this direction at this point, just one direction. Now I have to, once I have this sewn, I'm going to cut it on that line. If you're... Um, if you're using some of the larger pieces, you're going to need a pretty long ruler when you're cutting on the diagonal. This one is 18 and a half inches long. I'm going to line it up on that line I drew, and I'm just going to take it, and I am going to cut that in half. Look at that. Okay? So that gives me two parts. Now, the first thing I have to do is press the seam allowance. And the way I remember which direction to press is I press towards the sky. And that just seems to be something that I can remember. So the sky is the larger triangle. So I am going to slide my iron in so you can see this and I'm gonna flip it over and I'm going to press and I finger press first to make sure that seam is going in the right direction. And then I use my little iron. And you can actually, um, as long as you're getting all of the excess out here, you don't have anything extra, you're doing great. And you're gonna do that on both sides. Okay, I'm gonna set that. It's kind of, you kind of want to press towards the smaller one, but in this case, we do need to press towards the bigger one. And because there is excess out on the outside edge, it doesn't really want to press that way. Okay, so we have that one done. Okay, I'm going to move that back out of the way. 
So now I have these two pieces that you can see with a line drawn that way. I need to put them right sides together and I need to put opposite colors on top of each other. So I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to line up the outside edges. Now, we're so trained with half square triangles and different things that our, our um, did I do that right? Yes, okay, that we want to abut our folded seams. And we're not going to do that here. We're going to line up the outside edges. And so if I open no nesting. There's no nesting. If you open it up, there's a big gap here, okay? And that's what it's supposed to be. So now, once again, I like to pin just on each side just to hold it together for me while I um, sew. And then I need to extend this line down to this point. So I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to line it up and I'm going to line that up and I'm just going to extend that line right down to that point. Okay, like that. Now I'm going to take this to my sewing machine and I'm going to repeat the process of sewing a quarter inch on each side of that line. So I happen to have already done that, voila! <laughs> And here it is, here's the line I drew, here's my quarter inch sewing, okay? And now I'm going to, and so we are done sewing. We sewed on each side of the first line, we sewed on each side of this line, we're done sewing. And now we're going to cut it apart and get our flying geese. So once again, I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to put it on that drawn line. And I am going to cut this right in half. Okay, and these are kind of funny looking when you open them. If you look, it's like, wow, what, how did we get that? Where are our geese? Because our instinct is we're looking at the big. But if you look at this, can you see that you have, this is the goose and this is the sky. And that's exactly where we're going to trim. But before we trim, we have to press. But we need to press these seams. This one needs to go this way. This one needs to go this way. So we need to make a snip. Can you see that? We need to make a snip right where that's standing. Oh, put it down. Right where that's standing up in the middle. Okay. And once again, I forgot to bring my scissors in. So I'm going to do that snip with my <clears throat> rotary cutter and be very careful. Okay. All right. So I just made a little nick there. Do you see how I just made a little, kind of like when you're marking seams in garment sewing. Now I'm going to slide this over again, and we're going to press these in opposite directions. So this one's going to go like this, and this one's going to go like this. And I just like to come back and kind of make sure everything's as flat as possible. I just brought home a Lorstar iron, and boy, that's been a game changer for getting seams flat. <laughs> all right, so now we, all we have left is to trim. And you're probably wondering, well, when does her ruler come into play? Well, it comes into play right now, okay? We are going to trim this out, and the way we're going to do that is we're going to align this ruler so you can see we're going to put the exact shape. We're going to put it right on our seams. This is our seam allowance right up here. And notice we even have extra down here. The reason I love this method is that I get to trim something away on all four sides so I get a beautiful, perfect um, flying goose block. Okay? Now for me to cut, I'm going to, Michelle, if you don't mind, I'm going to turn it to the side. It's a little easier for me to cut. I'm going to put that, line that back up. And the first thing I'm going to cut is I'm going to cut across the top. It's real easy if you don't to accidentally get into your second one and ruin it. So I'm just going to come over here and cut that. Okay? That's how we know that. <laughs> yes, that's how we know that. All right. And then I can trim the two sides. And if you have a table you can walk around, this is great. If not, you can always turn it and realign it. I just like to try to hold it in one place. And then I'm also going to trim around the bottom. And then when I take it away, look what I have. I have a perfect 
flying goose block. I have an exact quarter inch seam, which this is important. From this point to here, you need a quarter inch. That's your seam allowance. And then when you come across your quarter inch here, it doesn't look like it, but if you measure, draw a line a quarter here and a quarter here, you'll get a beautiful point here also. And so you're going to trim that one. You're going to come back and trim this one. You're going to repeat it, repeat it for this set. And you will have, I'm going to turn it this way, you will have one, two, three, four beautiful flying geese out of two squares. Yay! Yay! And so that's the Eleanor Burns method.